Hey guys, it's X bringing you another League of Legends match. This one is not ranked, this one is Team Builder. I'm playing as Master Yi for the red team there on the bottom row. You can see I'm there on the lower right playing as Master Yi, our jungle champion. I'm going to be accompanied by High Command Katarina, who is going to the mid lane. Shen in the top lane, Janna and Sivir are going to round out our team in the bottom lane. Versus the blue team up in the top row, Sona and... Uh, Lucian are going to be in the bottom lane. Zed with Smite is actually going mid. We'll talk a little bit about that Smite in a little bit. Uh, Aatrox is going to go to the top lane, and Rengar is going to be my counterpart on their team uh, in their jungle. There's a lot of stuff that I wanted to talk about in this particular game. Um, and don't worry, Far Cry 4 is going to continue. It is AGDQ week, and I must admit I've had a little bit of a difficult time finding time to record uh, long Far Cry 4 sessions with so much awesome content happening on uh, Twitch with AGDQ. Um, but, you know, it's only been one day, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, going to set aside some time so I can record some more Far Cry 4 because I'm having a lot of fun with that. In any case, um, Zed on the enemy team has, has taken Smite. I don't think that's a mistake on his part. This is the new jungle. This is the new Summoner's Rift. I think it's still classified as Beta Summoner's Rift, in fact, here in the preseason. And now Smite can do a lot of different things, depending on what item you get with it. So, I mean, I figure if you're going to play Team Builder, it's probably okay. It's probably one of the safest places for you to try out new strategies, and I think that's what the opposing Zed is doing. I think he's trying out something new, trying to go with one of the different effects that you can get from Smite and uh, adding it to his repertoire. Because you can Smite players now for different effects. And he, he is playing uh, an Assassin Champion, so, you know, we'll see how that works out for him. I myself am still getting accustomed to the jungle. Uh, I think I did fairly well this game. Uh, the new jungle is pretty hard. <laughs> it's pretty difficult. There are all kinds of different routes that you can start now. There isn't a very standard way. You know, in the previous in previous seasons, there was usually like one or two different routes that you could take in the jungle, unless you were doing something really zany, in which case you could probably try you know, one other kind of route, but really there wasn't a whole lot of variation in the jungle before. Now, there's all kinds of stuff. Different champions will start at different places in the jungle, and more than just one potential place to start as well. As Master Yi, I'm choosing to start uh, at Golems, then I jump over to Red, and then I go over to where Wraiths used to be, um, Chocobos now, or whatever they are. Raptors are technically supposed to be Raptors, I guess? I don't know what they, what they actually are in the Wraith pit now. But I'm start, uh, starting off here fighting these golems. And I like to smite the golem early so that I can get the effect that it gives you, because now every big monster in the jungle uh, provides a different effect for you whenever you smite it. The red buff here, the used to be the Elder Lizard, this buff, if you smite it, will give you a massive heal. It'll give you a massive health boost. Now, it's not going to increase your health above what it can normally go, but if you're low on health and you smite this target, it'll boost your health. It, it, it'll give you a, a very large heal. But that's not as beneficial as the benefit that you get from smiting the golem. Whenever you smite the golem, uh, every few hits, you'll stun a monster. Not a minion, but a monster. And a monster is uh, any target in the jungle. And any jungle camp minion, basically, or any jung jungle camp monster. They were called creeps in uh, Warcraft 3. So here they're called monsters. And I just noticed the tooltip whenever I hovered over those uh, monsters there. They are actually called raptors, so... Yeah, I go to Raptors after that, and then I'll back immediately. Monsters hit a lot harder in the preseason, or in this new Summoner's Rift, so you've got to adjust. So I go back right after the Raptors, and then I use Teleport to get really close to the blue buff. Uh, doesn't matter which side of the map I'm on. I'll teleport really close to the blue buff. In this case, it happens to be the second turret on the bottom lane. And then I'll get straight to blue buff after buying my uh, jungle item, which you can see is that purple item there in my first item slot down there on the lower left. What this item is letting me do, this does your typical thing that, it does, that a jungle item should. It makes you more effective at killing monsters in the jungle. You can see there I took out blue buff and I'm taking out this uh, Gromp, where the white used to be. Uh, or where the, yeah, the big wraith, the white. Taking out the big Gromp there. He's, he's f formidable as well as the white was. And I see that uh, after I finish clearing that camp, Sona is very weak. Uh, so I'm heading out to the bottom lane here to try and help my team because they seem to be having a bit of a rough time. So I'm going to place a ward to see if I can catch Sona in the brush. She's gone by this point, but I decided to attack Lucian because he's alone and I am a jungle champion. I am an assassin. He can't quite get away from me because he chooses to uh, try and get away from me with his flash and then I hit him with my alpha strike. 
afterward. Waiting with your alpha strike as Master Yi is probably one of the... Uh, it takes some self-control, but it's one of the best things that you can do whenever you're trying to gank. Because people are going to use their... Uh, their escapes like flash and their dashes and things like that to try and get away from you, but Alpha Strike closes that gap and lets you get in. And if you're not running flash on Master Yi, then it's something that you really have to consider. Here I get attacked by Rengar in my own jungle, and I decide to try and 1v1 him. I try to brawl with him. I figure I'm not going to be able to get away from him very easily, so I want to do as much damage to him as I can instead of trying to run away. We can see down there in the chat, uh, Janna is asking why not run from Rengar. And that was my thinking. My thinking was that I wouldn't be able to get away from him anyway, so I might as well try and do as much damage as I can. With my team that close, it was probably still best that I run toward them and have Rengar chase me. That would have increased my chances of surviving and would have increased our chances of getting a kill. Even if he did take me down, we probably could have gotten a return kill off of him, or maybe we could have gotten a kill and I wouldn't have gone down. I wouldn't have given them, given them gold. I don't know. Running was probably the better bet there, but my thinking at the time when it came time to make the decision, was to try and stand my ground. Um, which I don't think necessarily was the, the best play. So now I'm coming in for a gank to try and take out Aatrox. I've got my jungle item, I've got an attack speed item, and I've got my boots. Shen is going to make his uh, attack here, and again I'm going to save my Alpha Strike. Shen taunts. Aatrox is going to pop his passive. You know, he has no control over that. Then he's going to use his flash to try and get away, but then again, I use my Alpha Strike right there after he uses his flash. So that helps me get a kill. So now the score is 2 versus 4. I have both of our team's kills, and the enemy team has 2 kills on us. So that's the deficit that we're working with. As When it comes to buying boots, in general, I don't really have a build order yet for this new jungle for Master Yi. I am pleased to find that I can build the kind of jungle item that I want, though. Because there are there are multiple different types of jungle items that you can buy now, and each one does different things. The one that I bought increases the effectiveness of my smite against monsters. And there are enhancements. If you'll notice, if you look in the jungle item icon down in the lower left of my first slot, there's like an empty dark gray slot that looks like there could be like a, a socketed item there. You can buy enhancements or enchantments. I don't know what they're called. You can buy items. I guess they're like socketed uh, gems or something that you can insert into your jungle item to upgrade it to even further customize it and we'll talk about that in a little bit but you can really tailor your custom uh, sorry you can really tailor and customize your jungle item to have it do whatever you want it to do or you know one of various different jungle roles so that most champions can fulfill multiple roles in the jungle at this point and it's actually really fun I actually really like that a lot. And what I'm choosing to do here is use the jungle item that improves the effectiveness of my smite against monsters, because as Master Yi, I want to be in the jungle a lot, and I want to be taking out monsters a lot, and I want to get my gold from the jungle uh, early on. Because Master Yi is not that great... Uh, he's not that strong until he gets some gold and items under his belt, and then he scales really hard once he's got some items. So I want to fight in the jungle a lot. And I just I actually just pick up a a cleanup kill on Zed there after he got a kill already, so you know, kind of go one for one there. But it's better than going one for O, oh, right? So, as I was saying, I definitely want to get a lot of gold from the jungle. And I just purchased the Devourer enchantment or enhancement or whatever you want to call it, and you'll notice that my jungle item has changed now down in the lower left in the first slot. Now, my jungle item is behaving a lot like Feral Flare behaves. Um, whenever you kill a minion in the jungle, you get one stack of, I don't know what it's actually called, I guess devouring stacks, I don't know. You get one stack on the jungle item. You'll see it here down in the lower left above my portrait after I kill this large golem or Krug, as, it, as they're called. I've got one stack of that little purple icon right there. That's one magic damage additional that I deal with every auto attack, and Master Yi attacks really quickly. We're going to see here that stack is going to go up again to two after I take out this red monster. Now it's at two, because every time you kill a large jungle minion, you get one more stack. And when you get this up to the 20, 30, 40, 50 range in stacks, that's a lot of extra damage you are dealing with each hit. 
because Master Yi swings very quickly. You might think one or two damage for every monster you kill. That's going to build up so slowly, it's not going to do anything. Here, I actually teleport in, get a killing spree on Sona. But unfortunately, Rangar shows up. He's able to clean me up, and I think he actually scores a kill here on Sivir as well. Yeah, he scores a kill on Sivir as well, so that didn't turn out too well for us. Unfortunately, Rangar had the same idea as I did, which was to go approach the bottom lane. I'm not sure what he was doing there, since the enemy seemed to be winning that lane already anyway. I guess he was just trying to help that lane steamroll, so he didn't do anything wrong there. But he was there, and it ended up messing up our plans. We're now 4-9. I am our, I am 100% of our team's kills at this point. I have all four kills, which is okay. If you want someone on your team to be fed, you want Master Yi to be fed. He's, he's really... Uh, He's really strong in that regard. Earlier in the game, I'm not sure if you noticed, we noticed, Shen noticed, and said in chat that the enemy team is all AD, and I responded, Roger that. The enemy team is all attack damage. Um, they only have one ability power champion, and it's their support, so their, cha their, their one ability power champion, their one AP champion, is not going to be dealing a ton of damage. They're mostly AD. So what our team wants to do is we want to build armor and then just win in the late game. All AD teams like this, I find, are fairly common in Team Builder. People want to play the really aggressive champions. People want to play the really uh, deadly champions like Assassins, which are commonly AD. They want to play the high damage champions like Lucian, you know, AD carries and stuff like that. They want to play the really strong brawler champions in the top lane, which are usually AD. So, I mean... People like to play AD champions, I find, in Team Builder, and so all AD teams are fairly common. And I've seen this happen a lot of times. All AD teams tend to get ahead very early, and sometimes they'll win early on, either because they've done so well that they demoralized the enemy team and the enemy team surrenders, or just because they win really hard early and just keep that momentum until about the 25 minute mark and then they'll take down the Nexus or something like that at that point. Sometimes all AD teams can win, but if they do win, they have to win early. If they don't win early, then they just don't win. All AD teams can't last into the late game. And that's actually going to uh, play a role in our team's chat, at least, uh, a little bit later here when we, dis when we begin discussing um, our chances of winning. We are 5 versus 14 right now. Um, again, I've got four of our team's five kills. This isn't bragging. This is me just trying to emphasize that our team isn't doing all that great at this particular point. And right now, I'm trying to uh, boost morale by letting our team know that we'll be fine. They're all AD. Just build armor. And Jenna's like, yeah, but Sona does chunk. And I'm just telling him it's not going to matter in team fights. Sona is going to be a non-issue in team fights. Sona will be able to stun. She'll be able to heal. She'll be able to get one burst off. And then that's going to be it. The enemy team won't be able to do anything later in the game because they're all AD. And if we all have at least one armor item, the enemy team's just going to be canceled out very hard. I'm trying to go for a gank here. Uh, I place a ward, and I catch Zed trying to set up a gank on me, actually, because he was trying to counter me. He must have had a ward in that bush. Aatrox was creeping around the side there. Aatrox tries to get away, and Shen ults on me to save me, or to provide some support. Aatrox does get away, but I turn with an alpha strike on Rengar. Zed flashes over the wall, and I get him with an alpha strike. Now, I'm going to do a little cool picture-in-picture -picture thing here with the editing. Watch as Zed jumps over, I alpha strike, and then a teammate flashes. That's a wasted flash, but I guess he couldn't have known that I was going to alpha strike. That was actually really cool. I had a lot of fun with that particular aspect, uh, with that particular team fight. Now, we get an enemy teleporting, here, teleporting in here on the tower as we're taking it down. This is a silly move uh, on Aatrox's part, because... Uh, he's not going to save the tower, he's not going to have enough time, and it's going to be just left alone among the three of us for us to take him down, which is exactly what happened. So, enemy champion kills, and I'm, I'm not sure if assists is the case too, but enemy champion kills do also count toward building stacks on my jungle item. Lucian does spot me in that bush, tries to get the ult off. I see it coming a mile away, and I get away. Rengar chases me into our jungle, our red jungle here, the top jungle, and he probably expects me to go right, because most people try to run toward their base when they're trying to get away, so he would expect me to go right. Instead, I broke off left, and this buys me some valuable time. I'll be able to get away in this bush if I want to, but I notice in the lower right, Rengar appears on the map in the middle lane. That means he's no longer pursuing me, and that buys me just a few seconds to get uh, four... 
last hits here? Yeah, I get four last hits here. And I figured that's about pushing it. That's about all I can get. So I head up into this bush to try and teleport away, get back home. And I do it at just the right moment because we can see Rengar's approaching the middle lane, or approaching from the middle lane to come and get me at that point. So I, I think I played that fairly well. Uh, fairly well, predicting enemies and outsmarting them and outplaying them and things like that. I was able to get a few last hits, get a little bit of gold out of that, get back to base, recharge, get back into the jungle. But instead of going to the jungle, I used teleport to, down to the bottom lane to take out this lower turret. I notice that we've got a push going on, there's nobody defending it, so I make my attack against it. Zed comes in, and I stop attacking it just a, f a fraction of a second too early. The tower ends up with four hit points. And you might consider that like, oh, what a shame, but no, Janna's able to come in. And she can uh, get that turret. Because Zed's down there to defend it, and my team happened to be headed down there anyway, we actually get a turret and a kill for just sending me back to the fountain once. So we came out ahead overall uh, in that engagement because of that teleport, which was really cool. Aatrox is up here in the top lane, tearing up our top turret. I purchased Home Guard to try and get there quickly, but you know it didn't really do any good. It was just it was just too late by that point. As I was saying, I don't really have a build order yet for the new jungle. Boots are something that I find interesting with my current setup. Boots are something that I have to sneak in as far as gold is concerned. I don't really have a... I mean, I want to rush my jungle item because it's extremely useful to build up. The sooner you get a fully built jungle item with what I'm doing right here with this build, the better because you just keep building up those stacks as quickly as possible and that lets you steamroll into the late game. So you want to, you really want to rush that fully built jungle item. And then, of course, you want your damage items like your Blade of the Ruined King and things like that. And at some point, you want boots, but you really got to sneak the boots in there. Like, you've got to be building, actively building the items that you're going for and at some point you might find yourself with 375 gold that isn't going to anything else and at that point you buy your first boots and hopefully that happens early in the game you definitely want that to happen early in the game you you have to find a place for it early on and then later you have to find a place to upgrade the boots to your tier 2 and then even later you have to find a place to upgrade to get your home guard or whatever enchantment you want for your boots and that's really something I find that's uh, dynamic and it feels a lot more, like, there's a lot more personal choice in the new jungle. I like it. There's a lot more situational choosing. Everything that goes on now is, it feels more dynamic. And that might have to do with the fact that I've been playing the old jungle for so long that it all felt almost routine, sort of. And the things that you were working on were map awareness and, you know, all kinds of things, that, you know, countering the enemy and just being a good jungler. Things like build orders and roots and things like that were all static um, but that's not really the case here. Here there's a lot going on in the new jungle. I like that a lot. I feel like jungle players, myself included, got the most out of this, uh, this, this new Summoner's Rift. I feel like we got the most out of this. And depending on your point of view, you might feel like you got the least out of it. Like, like maybe you don't like all of these new changes because it is a very different jungle from how it used to be. It plays like a very different game at this point. It still feels like old-style League of Legends jungling. Oh, here Shen says FF at 20. He wants to surrender at 20 seconds. And I flat-out state, nope. And I let my team know that their comp, all AD, does exactly this. It gets ahead early, uh, it gets ahead early, and then it loses. And Janna wants to surrender as well, but after I've said what I said, Janna says, well, I mean, maybe. And now on my way to the top lane here while the bottom lane is just getting wrecked. And we're sitting here 10 kills uh, at, a, at a 10 kill difference. My team has five kills to split between them because I've got eight of our kills. So we're not doing all that great. So I let my team know, don't worry, this is exactly how a game like this is supposed to look. It really is. And it always ends up with the AD team losing. I am fully confident in my statement here. Of course, as I'm making it, I'm thinking, and if I'm wrong, then oh well. But... This is a very confident statement that I made at the time. I, I've seen this happen a lot. The AD team gets ahead early and then loses. And it always plays out like this. They end up thrashing their opponents, which in this case is us. We're going to get thrashed, and then we're going to win. That's how this kind of game plays out. So it's going to look really bad at first, and it's going to feel like you're losing. But as long as they're not cracking your nexus, you are winning this match. The longer it goes on, every second that passes against an all-AD team is a second toward your victory. 
just so long as you don't let them crack that nexus. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're holding on by sheer force of will at this point. Uh, you've got to keep your team in high morale. I mean, it, there's also the fact that we have playing for us all the numbers. Really. It's not really a sheer force of will kind of thing. Numbers really play a role for us. Like I said, as time goes on, our gold increases. Uh, the items that we get become armor items. The items that they get increase in AD while we're mitigating AD, and really there's a whole lot going on there that just works in our favor as time goes on in this particular kind of setup. An AD team versus a a more well-balanced team like ours. We've got strong AD, we've got strong AP, we've got a strong tank, we've got good peel, we've got good engage, we've got good assassination, we've got a lot going for us. We're a very well-balanced team. And they are a team that steamrolls early. And as long as it's not early, we win. So I, I tried to stress all of that in that one line. Team fights continue to happen. I'm actually leading the charge with my team here. Placing wards and things like that. I know when to back off. I, I, know, I know not to overextend. I think that's a problem that a lot of Master Yi players have. Now, the enemy is breaking down our top turret here. And as they break down our top turret and approach our inhibitor, a surrender vote gets thrown out. I need to come over here and try and stop them from doing what they're doing. Janna's doing her best with her tornadoes. Sona is dealing some pretty good burst damage. I jump in on Sona with my Alpha Strike. She gets a stun off on me. I use my Meditate to mitigate the damage from Lucian's ultimate ability. And then I hit no on the surrender vote, which is the second no, so we're going to keep playing this game. Katarina is a little confused about smite slowing, and I have to clear some things up, let them know that uh, let my teammate know. You give my teammate a little bit of intel. Um, if there's something that a teammate is in the dark about that I can quickly clear up, I should probably clear that up, or anybody really should. Now here is a 3v2. Rangar comes in. I'm not going to make the mistake of sticking around to try and help out a teammate who's just going to get eliminated because then it's just going to be two of us getting sent back to Fountain for no gain whatsoever. So I actually uh, minimize our losses there and just pull back, heal up, teleport to this tower where Aatrox and Rengar are trying to score an objective. I jump on Aatrox. I should have jumped on Rengar. I jump on Aatrox's passive pops. Uh, I chase Rengar down. He gets in the bush, jumps away from me. My Alpha Strike is enough to catch up to him. Now I'm going to chase... Aatrox down. At this point, we can see my build is really coming to fruition. Sivir gives me a speed boost, and I get a double kill, having saved the tower. And Katarina is still asking about the smites in chat. That's cool. This opens us up for a clear dragon. All of our lanes are secured. We've got a couple of kills. There's only three of the enemy team on the map at this point. I get a kill on Sona. That, ki that kicks me over to the rampage range, but then I get shut down immediately. Still... That gives us uh, plenty of room for Dragon. Now I've got my core items. You can see there I've created a, uh, an item list for myself. Those are my core items. I've got all four of my core items, and it's time to consider countering the enemy. You, can't, you don't really want to build counter items until you have your core items. This is important. You don't want to build counter items until you have your core items. Determine what is core for your champion and your role in the team. Determine what is core for you. Get those, and then consider countering the enemy. Now that I've got... Um, all of my core items, it's time for me to start building the counter, which in this case is going to be a Randuin's Omen. I'm going to get a full tank item on Jungle Yi, which is actually really good against a team comp like this. I'm not going to do the kind of thing that's like, well, I'm an assassin, so I need damage and armor, so I'm going to get an Atma's Impaler, right? No, I'm not going to do that kind of thing. I'm going to fully counter them. I'm going to go gung-ho with the counter, and I'm going to just get me a full-on tank item, which is a Randuin's Omen. All right, so now that we've got all that out of the way, Aatrox is approaching the top lane. Katarina uh, was running away from him, and I popped my Highlander fairly early in the jungle for the speed boost to get over to her and save, uh, save her by taking down Aatrox. I also love that there are new objectives in the rivers. These little... What are they? I don't know what those are. Those little, those little creatures in the rivers. If you take them out, they will provide you... A little vision buff over there by Baron, and there's another one by Dragon. You can see we have a little spot open of vision and, and on the minimap by Baron. That's because I took out that little creature. He kind of serves as a little bit of a ward, a little bit of a ward, and if you run through that area, I think teammates of yours, including yourself, will get a speed boost. I'm not 100% certain on that, though. So we've got some team fights happening in mid here. The enemy is trying to make something happen. They've been ahead this whole time. Notice how our scores, uh, the, the our team scores, are actually closing as far as the death is concerned. We're now 24 to 28. Uh, we have Zed trying to take out 
Shin here. Shin manages to survive. Here I pop my Yomu's Ghost Blade and my Highlander for the speed boost. I'm going to close the gap with my Alpha Strike, get close to Zed, cut him up a little bit, get the kill there. Came running all the way from Fountain to get that kill in the middle of the map. And I was able to close the gap there because of Yomu's and Highlander combining the two of them. And now it's time, since there's nothing else going on in the map, lanes are pushed, it's time to get back into the jungle and continue feeding my jungle item. I keep wanting to say feed Feral Flare, but I don't have Feral Flare uh, in this build. I think Feral Flare still, still exists uh, on this map. I think you can still get Wriggles, and I think you can still build it up into Feral Flare. Uh, there's part of me that thinks I want to try and just go for old school Wriggles Master Yi in the jungle, but... Riggles no longer builds from a jungle item anymore, so it just makes more sense to... If I, if I want a Riggles effect, it just makes more sense to build this jungle item with this enchantment. Or maybe even a different jungle item with this enchantment, because the enchantment is what gives me the Feral Flare effect. The jungle item just makes it so that my smite is more effective uh, against jungle mobs. The smite that this jungle item gives me as well increases my health and mana. It gives me a, a health boost and a mana boost after using Smite, which helps me sustain in the jungle, which is one of the reasons I choose it over something like the uh, the more team fight oriented jungle items. I think they're called Warrior. I don't know. I look at them basically based off of color, but you do have uh, jungle items. Uh, I have the purple one. There's also a blue one and a red one. And, you know, I, I kind of want to experiment with those. Like I said, you have to you have to adjust uh, your playstyle based on the game that you want, and like, you, you can really customize the jungle item that you want. You don't have to go for this particular build that I do. I catch Aatrox in the jungle here. Um, he can't get away from me. He jumps over the wall. I just walk around the wall and finish him off. I'm now currently on a killing spree. Our team is 28-30. That's only a deficit of two. Uh, I've got 15 of our 28 kills at this point. So, that's pretty good. Rengar jumps out. I think he's going to get a kill on me. Uh, Shen gets the taunt off. That buys me enough time to start up a meditate. And because I meditated, Rengar wasn't able to get the killing blow on me. So that was really good team play uh, from Shen and myself, actually. But this Shen has actually been a really strong team player this entire time. I think he was the only gold player on our team in this team builder matchup. He was the one who said in chat that the enemy was all AD. Uh, he's been pretty good with his ults. He's been great with his taunts, and he's been good at surviving. You know, basically all the things that a Shen needs to be good at, he's been pretty good at in this game. I, I'm, it was uh, really good. Everyone in this, everyone on our team has actually done their roles all very well. So now I've finished my Randuin Zomin. So now I've got a full-on tank item. It's armor and hit points. It's armor and health. That's what that's what you get with a Randuin Zomin, as well as that active effect that slows down. Uh, enemy auto attacks and I believe their movement speed as well so it nullifies everything that the enemy is good at and it protects me from the types of damage they're dealing which is really dangerous on Master Yi because the way to counter Yi is to either stun him snare him or just outright kill him take him out of the fight and if an AD comp can't do that because I've got a Randuin's Omen they're slowed and I'm dealing massive damage in return along with lifesteal, then that's exactly what you want to do. Makes Master Yi a very devastating force against a team comp like that, because they're all assassin types. They go down really easy to my core build. Just my core build could do this to them. And the fact that the Randuin Zone makes me much more difficult to kill against them, it's really the only defensive item that I need. Lucian tries to clear out the bottom lane here, but I'm with, uh, I'm with Shen. I'm with one of my, uh, I'm with my tank. However, I see that there are things going on mid lane, going on bottom lane, and I decided to take that opportunity to teleport up to the top lane to keep pushing. Because we've pushed bottom lane, the enemy is, we got, I see two enemies down there on the minimap in the bottom lane, they're not going to be able to defend the top lane, so I'm going to push the top lane now. I'm going to start really applying pressure to them, because there's no reason for us not to begin pushing for the win here. What is important in war is victory, not prolonged operations. I do believe that is... Uh, a quote from Sun Tzu's Art of War, or pretty close to it. And it's true. When you can go for victory, you should go for victory. There's no reason to drag a fight out longer than it needs to go. So I'm applying pressure to both lanes, bottom and top. Aatrox comes to try and stop me. I take him out. I'm in turret range. I get out of turret range. Zed's coming for me. I alpha strike on him. He thinks his burst is enough to take me out. But his burst is not enough to take me out because, guess what? I'm wearing a Randuin's Omen. And I've got tons of lifesteal. Well, not tons of lifesteal, but I've got lifesteal to help me out. And my jungle item is up to 60 stacks at this point. Uh, I think it was at 59 stacks when I attacked him, but you know, really, is that is that much? 
Is there that much of a distinction? So now the enemy is actually approaching me, and they could probably take me out if Janna hadn't showed up at just the right time with that heal. I get stunned by Sona, and as I'm running away, Rengar does his thing, and yeah, okay, and I do end up getting taken out anyway, despite the fact that Janna came to support me. I really should have gotten out there a long time ago. I got greedy. I really wanted to get the uh, inhibitor. So now I'm looking at the enemy's uh, items. That's why I have the tab screen open here. I'm trying to see what they're getting. Are they getting a lot of armor? If they have armor on their team because they're trying to counter me, then I want to go for a Last Whisper. But because they don't, I want to go for the kind of items that will counter enemy carries, which is a Bloodthirster. You want a Bloodthirster whenever you're dealing uh, with... Uh, uh, other enemies that also deal tons of high damage. You want a Bloodthirster because you want to not only out-damage them, but you want to out-sustain them. And Bloodthirster gives you both of those. You're going to be able to do a lot more damage, and you're going to be healing with every strike that you deal, mitigating the damage that they're dealing. So Bloodthirster is a really good item against champions like uh, Zed and Rengar, and hey, they happen to have a Zed and Rengar. It's good against Lucian, and hey, they happen to have a Lucian. Uh, it's really good against Sona because there's not much that she can do to you. You're just going to cut her right up. It's really good against their whole comp, is what I'm trying to say at this point. So all of their all of their champions are trying to buy that their shit. But if they were building armor items, I would have instead gone for a Last Whisper to get through their armor and shred them that way. But they're not building armor, because they're just trying, they're trying to feed into what their team is good at, and that's AD damage. But we are countering that. Rengar jumps on our AD carry here. Uh, AD carry here. I jump on him. This starts a team fight. We're going to chase them down. Lucian is applying his ultimate ability, but I use my Randuin's Omen to slow down Sona, get a kill, jump on Zed. Lucian is left alone with no support. He jumps over to the tower. I Alpha Strike on him for a triple kill. The turret's going to turn on me. I've got another turret to deal with over here. Aatrox is trying to use it for support. Shen uses his ult on me. That saves me a lot of hit points, which is a tremendous help. Uh, at this point, I can't really go for Aatrox. I'm too low on health. I'm going to let Shen help me by taking the damage to get us out of there. He begins to tank this turret. Uh, I, you, I do what I do. He tanks the turret, and I take it down. That's exactly what he was going for. He didn't even have to say anything for that to, uh, for that to happen. I just figured that's what he was going for. Now Rengar is going to try and chase a low HP Janna into the jungle, but here I come to stop him. He jumps on me because, for some reason, I don't know, that was definitely a mistake on his part. He really should have just tried to get away, tried to go back to his base and his team. But I guess he figured... You know, Rengar versus Master Yi, he should be able to shred a Master Yi. But that hasn't happened uh, in recent minutes, so I don't know why he would expect it to happen now. But as we can see here, what I was saying earlier about AD teams getting ahead early and then just losing, and that this is how a game like this is supposed to look, that's exactly what has happened. We are now 10 kills up, as opposed to almost half an hour ago, well, I don't know, like 20 minutes ago, when we were 10 kills down. And that deficit actually increased. And then finally we closed the gap, evened things out, and then began to get way ahead. And it's it, it's due to our teamwork. It's due to our good team comp. Here Rengar jumps on Janna, and it's time for me to go save her. I just go in with an auto attack. And if I don't have my ultimate ability available here, and I'm not sure if this fight is a, a, a good representation of it, but if I don't have my ultimate ability available, if I don't have Highlander up, I'll use my Yomu's Ghost Blade as kind of a makeshift. Highlander, which just came off of cooldown, so that really wasn't an option here. Here, I'm going to go back. I'm trying to go back, but then Shin engages, and this kind of um, incentivizes me to go in, but the entire enemy team is here. I get exhausted. I get taken down. If I would have just gone back when I had intended to go back, then everything would have been fine, and I would have got my Bloodthirster. We wouldn't have given them any extra gold, but that's not what happened. Mistakes were made. Shin jumped in, and I wanted to support my team, so that's what happened. Uh, here, I've finished up my full build. I finished up my trinket. I finished up all of my items. I've got maxed out everything. All seven items are as upgraded as they could possibly be. And now it's time to start looking into elixirs and things like that, because now I've got a gold surplus. And this is something that's happened in previous Master Yi games, in previous seasons for me. Uh, I find that around this time in the game, I have a gold surplus. I have more gold than I can spend. I don't know if I've gotten 76 stacks on Feral Flare before. I'm not sure that's a that's a thing, but I've got 76 stacks on this jungle item here, and that is absolutely brutal. So now I'm looking at these new elixirs. You've got Elixir of Ruin, Elixir of Iron, Sorcery, and Wrath. Wrath is the attack damage one. I haven't really read all of those fully yet, but I know that Wrath was the attack damage one, so I bought the Wrath one. And what the elixir does is it gives you a temporary buff 
that you can spend gold on. So it gives you something to spend your gold on when you can't fill your inventory with any more items. And so I've got my entire build, and I've got an elixir up, and it's time, essentially, to close out this game. The, en the enemy has just lost this one. There's nothing really they can do uh, against my Master Yi, the way I've built him, especially when I'm being supported by a team this well-balanced and players who know what they're doing, which is basically what they are. Uh, this team has has shown that they know what they're doing, at least for this level, here in Team Builder. I'm guessing it's probably around the silver one to... I don't know. Silver. We're just going to say silver. Uh, around the silver level is what most of us are, because we got we have one gold player with us, so it's high silver, probably. But yeah, uh, showing that they've known what they're doing. They're able to keep it together. That was really important. In the face of a game that looks like it's going to be a certain loss... Recognizing what is actually happening and how these two different team comps behave and interact with one another was able to rally the team and like, just that aspect rallied the team. It, not only was, was it my mentioning it to them, but it was them keeping it together and having the capacity to see that, yeah, that is what's going on. And there was one surrender vote thrown out. We were able to stave that off, come back and just let this team comp do what this team comp does versus what the enemy has built up. So the base, basically the rest of this is just us shredding the enemy in their own base. Katarina scores a triple kill here. Gets a quadra. She doesn't get the penta, unfortunately. Uh, Shen gets the final kill there, and that's pretty much game. We're going to finish off this inhibitor and then press for the, uh, for the nexus. This was a really fun game for me to play. It was a really fun game for me to commentate. There was a lot of stuff that I wanted to mention that I'm not sure I, I'm not sure I mentioned all of it, but there's a lot going on here. Um, Rewatch it if you want, because I mentioned some points later. Uh, I mentioned some things later on points that happened earlier, so, you know, with that in mind, go back and rewatch it if you're so inclined. I'm just going to go ahead and close this out here. I don't have much else to say about this particular match, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thanks a lot for watching. And I'll see you next time.